Mark 12, Mark 12, the parable of the tenant in the vineyard. Then Jesus spoke to them in parable. Hang on a second. Can I see that? I think the last part that you spoke. No, it's fine. Yeah, I'm leaving it there. So. Yeah, so I think... Uh, what are we... Okay, Mason, read verse 20 to 25. Chapter 11, 20 to 25. I don't think we've covered that section. Yeah. When the evening came, Jesus and his disciples left the city. Early next morning, as they walked along the road, they saw the fig tree. It was dead all the way down to its roots. Peter remembered what had happened and said to Jesus, Look, teacher, and the fig tree you cursed has died. Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. I assure you that whoever tells this hill to get up and throw itself in the sea does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen. It will be done for him. This reason I tell you, when you pray and ask for something, believe that you you have received it, and you will be given whatever you ask for. And whenever you stand and pray, forgive anything you may have against anyone, so that your Father in heaven will forgive the wrongs you have done. They arrived once again in Jerusalem as Jesus was walking in the temple. Okay. Now, I think you, you've covered it. Thank you very much. All right. Have a seat. All right. So today, what's happening? Jesus cast a, a tree, the, the fig tree. After casting the fig tree, then he went on about some business, and then he comes back. And when he comes back, Peter remembered. Peter was a spokesperson. Peter remembered, oh, actually the trees that was cursed, it's actually withered. So he's starting to pay attention, and then he sees. So how many times do we pray to God and not be on the lookout for the results? Do we have a journal of all our prayers to say, this is what we pray for? And then we look for opportunities to see if God has answered. Because sometimes God answers, but because we're not paying attention, we think God doesn't answer. So Peter actually took note of the prayer, and he took note of the results. God answers our prayers every day. And if we don't do stock take and look at our blessings and look at what Jesus is doing, we can't we can't grow so jesus is saying uh, peter is saying he takes note of the uh, of the uh... <laughs> yeah no 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 it's fine okay yeah so so peter takes note of the takes note of can you stop with this sorry man you're disturbing me i don't know what you're chewing there Mason, can, can I see that? Thanks. All right. Um, yeah, so Jesus is actually uh, uh, dealing with prayer. And he's saying that watch out for the signs that the prayers have been answered. There are many prayers that God has answered. And there are prayers you did not even pray that other people have prayed for you. And if you are on the lookout, you start to see that, no, man, my life is actually looking good okay the, so so what peter is telling us is that we need to be observant we need to start observing the world around us and see the impact of our ministry of our prayer and our own behavior let us we we need to look at our children you know when i look at you i i i see where i've gone wrong and i see where i'm doing right so peter is observing because the world is a mirror. It reflects back our actions. And that's what Peter was dealing with. 
And Jesus says, have faith. In, in the text here, says to his disciples, they are following him, these guys. So to follow Jesus means you have faith. So Peter makes the commentary about the tree, and Jesus says, have faith. So it's like inception, you know? You have a dream, but you have a dream inside a dream. Okay? So many of us believe in God. We believe that God exists. We believe that he takes care of people, but we don't think he takes care of us. We believe that he takes care of other people. We don't internalize our faith. So even if we believe, some of us are still struggling with, that, with some of the sins. We say, no, if I look at that sin, yeah, God forgives sin, but that sin, no, God will not forgive it. So our sins become greater than God. Our problems become greater than God. So, so what? Um, <clears throat> so Jesus says to his disciples who are already following him, he says, "Have faith." These people already have faith, but he says, "You know, internalize it." Yes, I believe that God will forgive other people's sin; He's going to bless them. But me, who am I? I don't see myself. And God wants you to get to that point where you say, "I do matter." God has numbered the hair on my personal head. On this head, God has numbered this hair, not somebody else's hair, my hair. So we need to own up our faith. We need to own and say, God loves me. Many of us have not arrived there. We believe God is love, but does he love me? So Jesus is pushing back and saying, have faith. So even though we come to believe in God, there are certain things that we struggle to believe. You know, being a Christian, that, that doesn't mean you, you have arrived. Being a Christian means you actually, uh, you, you are getting started. What was the first name for Christians? Uh, the Christians were not, in Jerusalem, Christians were not called Christians. They were called people of the way. Because Jesus says, I am the way. So people who followed Jesus, they were calling, they were called people of the way. And then it was only in Antioquia when people started hearing Christ, 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 and say, okay, these are Christians. So it was much later. I think Jesus was dead by the time Christians became Christians. You know, they were his disciples and then they became people of the way and then they became Christians. So we as Christians, we are people on a journey. Okay? We are on a journey. So everything we do we need to revise and rethink about our thinking okay and then the last thing i want to talk about i think this devotion is getting longer <coughs> jesus says when you ask for something uh, he says forgive he says if you forgive it says if he's saying that forgiveness is the key god must first forgive us and then we must also forgive others okay so, and then if we don't forgive others, then we become hypocrites if we expect to be forgiven. And, and Jesus says, Jesus says, when you pray, uh, forgive. He's saying, uh, take off the weight. Don't come to God with excess baggage, with bitterness, with malice, with revenge in your mind. He says, forgive. You know, and the word forgive gets thrown around a lot. People talk about forgiveness, but nobody knows what forgiveness looks like. Okay, so there's a psychologist that just forgot his name. Uh, he, he mentioned that th th there are three tiers when it comes to forgiveness. <clears throat> the first level of forgiveness is um, is exoneration. So forgiveness. When you forgive, we exonerate. It means you wipe the slate clean. The record of the transgression gets removed completely. There's no sign that there ever was an offense. It's called exoneration. So we exonerate people when children do something that they don't understand. You can't hold it against them. Uh, when people do an accident that is beyond their control, you can't blame them. You know. Uh, um, Exoneration also looks like uh, if somebody wrongs you, 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 you go to them and then you say, um, you've done me wrong. And then you, you don't make excuses. You accept the blame, you confess the sin, you say, I've done wrong, and 
you, you give assurance that the transgression will never happen again and you don't blame anybody, you don't, you don't blame anything, you accept the, the, the blame completely, then you create a, a way, you make it easy for people to exonerate you, okay? Then people can wipe the slate clean. The second level of forgiveness is called um, forbearance. The first one is exoneration, the second one is forbearance. Forbearance, you approach somebody, you approach somebody and say, you've done me wrong, and the person says, sorry, but they blame you or they blame other people and say, yeah, if you didn't do this, I never would have wronged you. So these people, they they accept the the, the the problem, but they still blame other people. They don't say, I did wrong. And then they also blame you, and you don't get a guarantee that they'll, they'll, do, they'll keep repeating the same thing. But you still choose to forgive them because of maybe these people you work with. And for your work to, to prosper and work, you have to have a good working relationship with these people. So even with exoneration, if the relationship is very important to you, you exonerate, okay? So then with forbearance, you, you, you forbear one another sin. People wrong you, they, they are doge about the explanation or the, the excuses that they throw at you. So, but you can see they don't take full, full responsibility for their thing. But anyway, you, you put up with them because their relationship is important so that you can do what you need to do. Okay, and then the third level is the level of uh, release. Somebody knocks your car, the bumper falls down and then he, he runs away, hit and run. You don't know the person, but they've wronged, somebody wronged you. So how do you forgive this person? So the same psychologist, uh, I think I'll just link up the, the name in the comments or in the description on YouTube. Uh, he says that you need to release. So you and the person who wronged you, you don't have to have a relationship in order for you to move on, but you need to move on. So, so he says, no, if somebody has wronged you, you can't get off hold of them, uh, they don't remember, or they, they're people with uh, maybe issues. So you, you release the pain. You release the pain so that you don't have the emotional fog because resentment creates a fog around your eyes and you can't see, okay? When you're angry, you stop seeing properly. Stop seeing properly because your the anger, the pain, uh, you don't see it, it's a sp spiritual thing, but your eyes become closed. And when you pray and then you forgive and then you, you, you transfer the, the guilt, the pain on the cross, on Jesus, then your eyes become open, then you see better and you'll be able to see the prayers that are being answered. So you pray, God answers the prayer, but because of the fog, you, you can't even see, okay? So now, those three levels of forgiveness, I agree with them, I, I sign up on them, I believe. But Jesus is asking us for something much more demanding than that. Because now, if I'm waiting for you to own up to your guilt, then, my forgiveness is dependent on another human being. So now that's a problem. Jesus says, don't deal with the people, deal with me. Okay, I've already died for those people who may have wronged you. So look unto me, make me the standard. Don't make somebody else's confession, acceptance of guilt, the center of your forgiveness journey. Jesus says, forgive. So when somebody is busy cursing you, Jesus says that's when you bless them. So this person is, is not even aware of the pain that is causing you. He's still cursing you. And Jesus says, bless those who curse you. He doesn't say, bless those who cursed you. So they are in the process. They still haven't realized the implications of what they're doing. What you do is you, you pray. You have a higher standard as a human being, as a Christian, to forgive. Don't wait for people to own up. Don't wait for people to be uh, what what. People wrong you, you forgive. And when you forgive, Jesus says, you now have the key to ask for whatever you want. A mountain throwing in the sea, what purpose does, does it do? Jesus says, if you, take, if you ask this hill to go and get thrown into the sea, 
it will be done. What purpose does it have? No purpose. Jesus is saying, don't look at the object of your prayer. Just look at the faith. Pray with faith, and it will be answered. Believe it. Don't, don't even think about the the horrendous, okay, not horrendous, the, the humongous or the magnitude of what you're asking. Just pray and believe, and God will do it. And you have to forgive. Empty your pockets. Keep short accounts. Keep short accounts with your neighbor. Keep short accounts with the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> command what you will and give what you command. This was the prayer of St. Augustine that we remember. That you are calling us to a higher standard that is, that, that is almost impossible to pull off. You're asking us to forgive people who are cursing us. You're asking us to have a stronger relationship with you by not using man as a standard, but by using you as a standard. We pray that, God, you will bless us and make us be able for this journey that you are calling us to, to walk on. Please forgive us our transgression. And we also forgive all those who have wronged us. We will meditate on this word slowly but surely through you and your grace. We will be able to achieve what you ask us to do. We pray for these things right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.